Hey everyone, welcome to Yoga Detour. I'm Cecily, I'll be your instructor today. We're gonna be delving into some more primal movement patterns, focusing on the core and then getting into some crawling. When's the last time you crawled? I look forward to joining you in this practice. We're gonna start on the hands and knees. First of all, just getting comfortable here with some rocking motion. Getting into the wrists. If you haven't prepped your wrists, you might want to find that video before we move forward. But for now, just looking at how those wrists feel today and how we might just find some extra stability here, maybe switching the direction of the fingers a little bit and finding the placement that feels like it works best for you. Okay? And then looking at how we have positioned the spine. We don't want to think of tucking the tailbone too far under or letting the tailbone drift too far up toward the ceiling. So if you happen to have a yoga block lying around, like I do, I'm just going to use this block in combination with my trusty mic pack to keep myself honest, keep myself level. My block's a little higher here, but you're welcome to place your block closer to the hips as well. By resting the block right on the pelvis, you can make sure that the pelvis doesn't do any kind of major tipping around or shifting. So, to begin with, I want to keep my block balanced and then play with reaching back one leg, noticing if I can maintain that same position of the block, and then bringing that leg down. Let's try the other side. Reaching it back and bringing it down. Let's try in a hand, one arm forward. No shifting the lower body. That hand comes down, changing sides. Okay, let's try one of each. I'm going to take my right leg back and my left arm forward. Block stays. Bring him back down. Left leg back. Right arm forward. Block stays. And then release. Okay, how's that? From there, we're going to keep the shoulders where they are. I've got my toes tucked under. And then without shifting around my hips or my spine, I'm going to float the knees just up off the floor. Let's just hold that position, feeling a little bit of pull between the hands and feet. So it's like my feet are dragging the mat forward while my hands are pulling the mat back. And you can hear it in my voice that I'm already starting to shake. Are you? Let's come down, take a quick little rest, move the block off to the side, Give the hands a little shake. So depending on how that floating position felt, we might be able to bring some variation into it. Feel free to keep the block where it was, or try this one with the block set off to the side and notice if you can maintain that stability on your own without the block there for feedback. So I reset the hands, reset the feet, float the knees off. Like before, can I maintain my left leg where it is and reach the right leg back? Put that foot back down, keep the knee floating, left one goes back. Bring the knee down, both knees down, relax for a second. Let's just move our spine now into flexion. And then into extension, lifting the head up, lifting the tailbone up. And then we'll go back toward that more neutral position. Reset the feet, take a breath, get ready, and float those knees off again. This one's a little bit harder. Taking the right hand, can we walk those fingertips ahead? And then walk them back in. Can we walk the left? And then walk them back in. If that felt close to impossible, let's try it again, but put the knees and feet a little bit wider, like mat distance apart. Reset the hands. Float those knees, crawl the right. Maybe now it's possible to lift the right arm up and bring it back down. Crawl the left, lift it up, bring it back down. Rest those knees, take a seat. Let's interlace the fingers, give the wrist a little break. It's gonna roll them around in both directions. 
And let's go to palms and circle the hands around each other. Both ways, switch directions. Okay, so now I'm gonna move back on the mat a little bit. Getting my knees off the floor again. And now I'm gonna look for that contralateral work where we do one hand, one foot lifting again and take a little step forward. So my left foot, my right hand come off and I step. My right foot, my left hand, step. Trying to get the hand and the foot now off at the same time, little hover and step. Let's do one more. And now can we go backwards? Step back, step back. One more time and then take a rest. Little wrist stretch, let's go into the back of the hands. Take your break here, walk the hands as close as you want to to your knees. And then we'll do that one more time. But let's bring our block back into the exercise. Keeping ourselves honest again, seeing if it feels any different. <clears throat> Reset the position of the hands under the shoulders. Tuck the toes under, float the knees. Let's go left foot, right hand, step. Left hand, right foot, step. Right hand, left hand. Left hand again going backwards. Right hand backwards. Left hand, right hand, and come down. Moving that block off to the side, having a seat. So obviously I'm only going the, with the distance of my mat, but even that is a lot of work. Obviously once this starts to feel a little bit more natural for you, use all the space you can. You can use a whole room, you can go to the beach, crawl up and down that beach, go to the park, crawl around with your kids. This is one of the best movements we can do to keep our bodies connected to our brains and that cross diagonal pattern that sometimes we lose when we don't spend very much time moving around. So I hope you enjoyed that. I look forward to seeing you next time as we follow the detour together.